Royal Schools for the Deaf in Manchester is a residential school for pupils with a range of severe to profound communication disorders. Students would be assessed as not meeting level one of the national curriculum, so their performance is measured using P-levels and pivots. To encourage communication with pupils, a multi-sensory approach is used throughout the school. Chloe Bedford is an experienced teacher of both mainstream and deaf students. In her primary class, she uses a range of strategies, including sound and vibration, objects of reference, and picture exchange to develop pupils' communication skills. I'm Chloe Bedford, and I'm a teacher in the multisensory support unit. My class is Christopher, Aidan, Annie, Hina, and Joseph. Christopher is blind. He has some light perception, but not a great deal. He does have some useful hearing, but he's not, at the moment, tolerating hearing aids very well, so it's difficult to make use of that hearing. Hina is profoundly autistic. She also has severe to profound hearing loss. She will tolerate amplification for some of the time. I wonder if Joseph will say hello to me. Joseph has a cortical visual impairment, which means although his eyes can make use of light and he can see some things, although it fluctuates, his brain is not able to make any sense of the things that he can see. Annie, I'd like you to look. Annie like to look. is autistic, and because of her autism, she is unable to make any sense of the sounds she hears. Annie and we also feel that she has a limited ability to process visual information. Are you going to say... Aidan is good. autistic with a visual impairment and some good. challenging behaviour. Morning. Can I see you say... We use good. any and every form of communication good. that works okay. with the students. We sign with all of our students anyway, even though they are not all able to understand or sign back because we don't know which of the signs they do understand. And we feel we're providing them with a language-rich environment. Joseph's turn to say good morning. We are extremely well resourced in terms of staffing Joseph. and that is what enables us to make such good progress with these students. You become a key worker to that student and you work one-to-one -one in a classroom with a teacher. Time. A lot of the students Start. have multi-sensory impairment, Start. so Start. you need to work closely and you're trying to get them to communicate, whether through sign or verbally. We use hand-on-hand -hand sign. So I sit behind yeah. Joseph and encourage him to use his hands. We have a greeting every morning. The format is always the same because our students need to know exactly what's happening and need to know what to expect. Tuesday. Tuesday. We use what's called a multi-sensory approach Wednesday. because we need as many ways as possible to give information to children. That's Tuesday. Smell is a very important part of every lesson. Tuesday today. Every day we have a different tactile card and a different scent for the day. Tuesdays was peppermint. This is done to cue the children in so that they begin to understand that you smell rain, this rain, particular rain, rain. smell and you feel rain. this particular feeling and then these are the things that are likely to happen on this Joseph day. Joseph is asking for the rain, that's lovely. It's the oh, rain. Oh. It is. The reason we use the sign rain, rain is because the students seem to be very motivated by the feeling of spray on their head. So they are quickly able to make the link between this being done and then the sensation of water being sprayed. So we start off by coactively signing. That's where you actually do it with the student. With Tuesday Hina, today. it's been reduced to a prompt Tuesday to tap on the arm. Today. Good girl. Good. Signing rain. rain. Hina signed rain. And Annie is still very coactively signing, but I can leave her towards the end of the movement and she will complete it. And she understands that when she does that, then she gets the sensation she likes, which is minty water being sprayed around her. So it's all very much to do with Smell. being motivated. Tuesday. Are you ready? 
Smell. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, Aidan will use photographs to identify <laughs> other children, but all of the rest of the students are using objects of reference to identify each other. This is Aidan's object of reference, and we give the pupils an identical one to match it. Christopher, Hina, Joseph and Danny. The object or the activity is paired with the person over and over again until almost always the student learns to associate that object with that activity. We're going to do our timelines for Tuesday. The book. The book. Once you're there, you can the then book. use the objects on a timeline so you're able to communicate to the student what they will be doing today. Pick up your book. Well done. Well and put on. it on the timeline, Annie. Oh. Drink. Oh. Drink. Good boy. They can look at the timeline Drink. and see how many things there are left today, if there's a lot or a few. And we can give them, for example, their spoon to tell them that now it's time to go to dinner. Oh. Christopher and Joseph, who do have visual impairments, will use objects of reference as their main term of reference. Dinner time! Dinner! Dinner. Well done. Dinner. To get oh, him to sign, yeah. especially things like dinner, uh, that's a good, you know, reinforcement. Because if he can sign dinner, then he can tell us that he's hungry. And if he can tell us that he's hungry, then we can move on with that. And he's got to understand that sign means something. Joseph is learning the names of things. Um, he's got very, very good tactile exploration, so we're not focusing as much on that. And Annie is holding things and feeling things and maintaining eye contact is what we're working on quite a lot with Annie. Um, and again, matching tactile cards. You would like dinner, but we are waiting. For Annie and Hina, who can see, but because of their autism, they can't process what they see accurately and we don't know how much sense they make of the visual world. We use objects of reference with them as well as sight. Yes, please. Each student has a set of individual objectives for every session. Pick it up. For Christopher, Pick it up. is to learn the signs of the names of the objects we use and to seek objects. Pick up. He has been very Tuesday. reluctant to explore things with his hands and obviously yes, his please. first sense is going to be tactile and he is going to need to look for things and explore them. Christopher is matching tactile cards to objects as well and we're hoping soon to start pairing objects of reference with photographs so that the photographs begin to make sense and then we'll gradually withdraw the objects of reference. Hina can be difficult to keep on task. She's also quite hyperactive and her LSA struggles sometimes. In between times, Hina was allowed to go off and maybe get something else to do, get something out of a tray. In fact, now I encourage time that. Time for Hina to go and get change. Hina will then understand that if she gives me a bit, she can relax a bit. And for a student like Hina, the fact that she's engaged and interested in one activity is something that we look for and value. In. Hina, from a very early age, has been very keen to get messy. She likes wet, sloppy things. <laughs> Another problem is that because Hina will only tolerate pureed food, and pureed food is nice and sloppy, we were finding at dinner times that her hands were going into the food and the food was going right across the room and not much of it was getting into Hina. We decided to try a desensitisation programme and desensitisation can be used for many things, but this was just one example of it, where Hina is allowed to get as wet and as messy and explore as many textures as she likes until she no longer wants to do it. And we have found that if she is allowed to completely indulge her attraction for wet and sloppy things, that she is then not as quick to do it at times when it isn't appropriate. And we worried initially that it might encourage her, but we have found that um, stopping her from doing it makes her more frantic and she will find something <laughs> sooner or later. So allowing her to do it, and she does it 
normally on a daily basis now helps us to tell her it's not appropriate at other times. Students are also exposed to tactile experiences as they explore the concept of pushing and pulling in Anne Goff's science class. The science lesson is part of the RSD programme study. Two, pull! And the particular programme study that I was following um, said that for this term that we'd be doing forces. Hold it and pull. So I take the programme of study and differentiate it um, to make it specific to meet the needs of the students within this group. Pulling. Sophia is only four years old and is the youngest student at the school. And the reason that she's come to this school uh, is because she has um, a vast range of very, very complex needs, um, one of which is deafness. And everybody who was involved in placing Sophia at the school felt the benefits of the right approach to education outweighed the fact that she didn't have an appropriate peer group. The students within this group all have profound and multiple learning difficulties and therefore they are working at a very similar level to Sophia regardless of the fact that they're older. But we differentiate the curriculum for each individual child. We were looking at developing the students' manipulative skills in the lesson. Most of the students in this group don't find it very easy to grasp and release and to use their hands. And in order to develop effective forms of communication, they need hand function. Most of our students haven't developed that skill. Therefore, they're not particularly motivated by objects and not motivated by communicating about them because they don't explore them. So one of the things that we're teaching is exploration. All the movements that you see with Sophia are not intentional. If something's on her and it's annoying her, we wanted to understand that she can use her hands in order to remove that item. We'll maybe put a cloth over her face or on her neck and see if she can move her hands intentionally towards that item to remove it. And that links in with the science lesson in that we're, we're putting things around her, asking her to hold them, pull them, move them, feel the movements of them. Oh, you like it. And I will set the same objectives for that lesson um, for perhaps six weeks, perhaps six months. The learning support assistant will record in great detail what's happened in that lesson. I will then look at that to see if consistently within a repetitive session we've had the same response. Learning support assistants are encouraged in their professional development and Camilla Stewart is on site to support training in communication strategies. Remember, no verbal prompts. I started here, I didn't have any qualifications at all and I've taken advantage of all the training that's been offered. I've done visual impairment courses, sign language courses, NVQ and find professional development really important. If you physically prompt, it means you can withdraw the prompts gradually, and that's why we're going through the PECS training with the students. PECS Picture Exchange Communication System is a way of giving students the opportunity to ask for things. You've and seen them coming to give drink. us pictures, and a this drink. is what it's all about. Well done, Annie. A drink. Oh. Your confidence is much better because you have an idea of what you're doing. Grape, well done. Right, lovely. Well done, Sue. We differentiate the curriculum as imaginatively as we possibly can. The reason we're doing a poem this term is because that's what's on the programme of study. I'm trying to get across something of the nature of poetry and them being an audience rather than them being the centre of attention. I went for a walk in the garden. I went for a walk. One day, I went for a walk in the garden and collected some things on the way. I made up a rhyme involving objects that they find in the sensory garden. 